I did get to watch the um, fight live, as you know. Well, for the people who don't know, who are um, not watching this video live, um, one of my computers crashed, and basically the main one. So I had to do a whole system restore, and I'm literally just getting things back um, to order. I, I hooked up some um, new equipment, so now I got to send my powerful PC back again, you know, to... Um, to get some uh things um done i was adding memory but anyway um it's it's safe to say that he's probably going to be moving up to um 147 pounds for his next fight um he is now the undisputed champion to be undisputed in this era to be undisputed in this era you have to have the wbc the wba the ibf and the ib um excuse me the wbo titles the last undisputed champion of the four belt era of the four belt era was in 2005 when Jermaine Taylor had beat Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins was the first undisputed champion of the four belt era. All right. So now Terrence Crawford has accomplished this and it's, it's something that is going to happen again. If all goes well with the, uh, world boxing super series tournament but it's kind of not because um how can i put it um there's still a cruiserweight champion out there dennis lieberdev who still has a title um one of the wba titles so in the case of the wbc cruiserweight tournament you know um you're supposed to have um, an undisputed champion but it's not like the case of this 140 pound you know, situation where Terrence Crawford has all of the titles, you know, that you can't have to be undisputed. He has the WBC. And with the WBA, there are two champions, right? There are two champions. I understand it's crazy, but there are two champions in the WBA. So that's why um, his undisputed status is more prestigious, in my opinion, than the undisputed status of who's going to win that World Boxing Super Series tournament because you still got Dennis Lieberdev out there with that secondary. Um, um, actually, he has the main WBA title, but the secondary WBA title is by um, um, is being held by Torquitos. Um, Dor Dortikos. I'm, I know I'm going to get his name right. In the cruise ways. But anyway, let's stay on topic. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live, and I cover every single major fight live. All the links to my social media are right down below. And basically, you know, I'm building, you know, a boxing empire. You know, we've got the media website foundation that's getting more active. I wrote my first article. It's a vanilla article. You know, vanilla, just, you know, saying exactly what it is. You know, um, um, I delved into um, this. Um, undisputed thing i'm talking about right now but you know i'm starting to get comfortable writing and i'm going to be pumping out a lot of material that way we also have a team of writers um we've been um doing really well on the social media side of things as far as getting you know numbers up all around the board from the like page to the instagram we're working on twitter um and then here on YouTube, as you can see, I'm back doing videos consistently again and making sure that uh, we're talking about boxing without holding any allegiances to anybody, whether it's because of race or not, or whether it's race or because I just want to be a groupie or whatever. We tell that shit like it is here. We tell that shit like it is. You know, I'm not aligning myself with no boxers or anything, so you're not going to be seeing me like some of these media reporters out here sucking these boxers off. I'm a Terrence Crawford supporter. But now that he's the, the undisputed champion, holding all four of those belts at 140 pounds, it's, you can almost say that it's pretty, you're pretty sure that he's moving up to 147 pounds, but again, too. Now, I had the privilege and was blessed to be accepted to one of my, top, uh, one of my, my, my first top rank event ever I cover fights as media was uh, Crawford versus Diaz. And um, in the build-up to that fight, he was pretty much saying that he was going to be moving to 147 pounds this year. So right now we're here August, August the 20th, 2017. I'm Teacher Controversy, and there's Teacher Controversy Live. And, and, and if we're at the end of August, basically, you might as well say then the end of the year would be his next fight, I guess, in December. He'll probably be back in December or January. Now, people are saying, well, if he go up to 147, then he might as well fight Pacquiao. But... Here's the thing. The schedules don't quite line up. So if Terrence Crawford wants a shot to, 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 to or if Top Rank is going to deliver Pacquiao, if he beats Horn, if, he, if, they, if Top Rank wants to, de, wants to deliver Pacquiao, you know, or Jeff Horn, 
to Terrence Crawford at 147 pounds. It would have to be like in April or May, so which means that Terrence Crawford's got to get a fight in December or so or have that layoff until then. You see what I'm saying? And that's too long of a layoff for him, you know? So for him and Pacquiao to fight this year, you know, it's out of the question. But in the meantime, who can he fight at 147 pounds? Now, Bob Barham and the WBO, you know, have a real tight relationship. Let's just, you know, say it that way. So, you know, I'm pretty confident that um, if Terrence Crawford, when he officially moves up to 147 pounds, he'll be made the WBO mandatory. But once again, it's all about, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's Bob Arum anymore. I don't think it's Bob Arum anymore. I think it's the management of, of, um, of uh, Pacquiao that don't want to deliver, deliver Pacquiao up to, you know, uh, Terrence Crawford because Pacquiao is still a cash, uh, cash cow, even though he's going to be, what, 39, you know, at the end of this year, December. Something like that. So looking at, you know, um, Terrence Crawford is saying that he wants to go directly to top competition. You know, he wants the top guy at 147 pounds. And right now the, the top guy at 147 pounds is Keith Thurman. You, oh, say, say Floyd Mayweather, whatever the case may be, Floyd Mayweather is done. He's a novelty fighter right now. I'm not seeing it in a bad way, you know. And the same thing, you know, with Pacquiao unless he gets him. But right now the number one guy is Keith Thurman. Number two, you know, you can say, you know, in, in, in many fans' eyes, even though he doesn't have too much on his resume outside of that big win, you know, over Kell Brook, you know, um, you got you got Errol Spence, you know, then you got guys like, um, you know, Danny Garcia, you know, Sean Porter. But those fights are not going to come next. Those fights might not come until, like, the end of, like, 2018, maybe early 2019 for Terrence Crawford. Remember, Terrence Crawford is a – um, going to be 30 years old next month. It's going to be 30 years old on on um the 28th of September. You know, so he's he's there. He's in the, the the peak of his prime. These next two years should be really, 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 really good for him. So looking at you know fights that could happen. You know, you think that um you know um Adrian Broner would take that fight? He took the Mikey Garcia fight, but my God, that would be brutal. You know. I got Terrence Crawford doing some crazy things to him, you know, some ungodly, you know, sinister things to him. But that's just my personal opinion, you know, and um, that fight was actually at one point in time in some preliminary discussions. But Adrian Broner wasn't making 140 pounds. Adrian Broner was supposed to fight um, Adrian Granados at 140. And the winner of that would have been the mandatory for the WBC for Terrence Crawford, the winner of uh, Crawford versus Postol. You know, what about uh, Terrence Crawford versus Lucas Matisse? But see, Golden Boy and Top Rank don't have a working relationship right now, you know? So I'm looking at, like, the top guys that were 147 pounds. You can say, look, Terrence Crawford, like, for, 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 a come, for, for his first fight at 147 pounds, right, we've seen Terrence Crawford take some tough shots from even smaller fighters in Yurkis Gamboa that a lot of people now, in hindsight, but they were hype about the fight when it happened, you know, were saying, like, yo, you know, like, um, uh, Gamboa was touching him up. So we've seen, and even Hank Lundy touched him up. Now, remember, he's dominated all of the fights that he's won, but he, we, he, we have seen him vulnerable and take shots that he should not have taken, meaning Terrence Crawford. So at 147 pounds, he can't fuck around like that. He don't want to take those chances. You know, because if you get in a little, uh, these little bit of issues, and, and here's a saying I've been using a lot lately, even if, uh, even if it's a small issue, an uh, issue is an issue. You know, so imagine, you know, if when he gets to that point and he, you know, takes a clean shot from a Keith Thurman like he would have took from a Gamboa, you know, or lighter punches that he's took in, um, in uh, previous fights. You know, imagine if he takes a shot like that from a Danny Garcia, you know, or Errol, uh, Errol Spencer. By the way, him and Danny Garcia won and, um, uh, fought each other in the amateurs. And Danny Garcia and Terrence Crawford, no, Andrew Garcia and Terrence Crawford got beef. You know, I got that uh that footage on the channel. You know, um, so you know maybe a Diego Chavez. You know, Diego Chavez is still a name that hardcore fans you know respect. And what we're talking about, we're talking about his first fight at 140 pounds. I mean, 147 pounds because if he stays at 140, he has to fight Sergey Limpinitz. But Sergey Limpinitz. Um, he's an Al Heyman fighter, and also they tried to stop the Julius and Dango fight from being for the IBF title. They tried to stop history, but nobody's talking about that. They tried to stop history. So, 
you know, looking. And then, you know, he's got guys like Amir Imam, you know, Rancis Bartholomew, you know, Antonio Rose Coast. So basically you're going to have, like, when he drops those titles, you're going to have, like, Al, you have Al Heyman fighters positioned for that titles. You know, you got a, um, you got two Al Heyman fighters positioned for the WBA and the IBF. Antonio Rose Coast, the WBO, he's a Golden Boy fighter. And then Amir Imam, you know, he's um, Don King for now. You know, especially what was going on with Don King. Adrian Broner could have been right up there, you know. And then, you know, you got Mikey Garcia, you know, who's got that diamond championship. You know, so technically that's three Heyman fighters, even though Mikey Garcia is not officially signed with Heyman. So it's going to really be interesting to see where he goes. And as far as Julius and Dongu is concerned, hey, listen. People was talking all this stuff about, well, you know, he's a slick fighter and everything. Yo. Did you notice all the announcers, even if you watch the little teeny bits of footage there out, out there of him, even the professional announcers and commentators been talking about, like, yeah, we really don't know nothing about this dude. It's not that much footage. It's no footage. You can't even get his old weigh-ins. Go look at Box Rec, yo. You can't even, you know, like in Box Rec, you be thinking, like, damn, how the fuck did they get these weights? You know, who's they, who's they weight guy? You know, to make sure all the weights are, like, right and shit. You know, the person's got to go through all the paperwork. You know, and get all those uh, those those weigh-in sheets and shit. You know, like it's it's no weigh-ins before his uh his fight weight won the IBF title uh, against Eduard um uh, Tronovsky. And you look at the year he's had. You know, and he said during the um during the um during during like the uh, the final press conference is that he didn't have to fight for no regional titles or he ain't never fight for no like those little under like link titles like that. You know. Like, he said he just was fighting for, like, local-ass shit. You know, like, the fucking, what is it? The WBO African, the WBO Africa title. The vacant WBO Africa super welterweight title. Shit like that, you know? So, you know, he's jumped on the scene real fast, and then he's jumped on the scene against a guy where he scored a first-round knockout, you know? So it's like you can't really judge him off of that. And then when he fought Ricky Burns, you know, for people who know Ricky Burns, it was pretty much a 50-50 fight, even though we didn't even know who Adangu is, just because it's Ricky Burns, you know. Um, and then he goes on the fight like Terrence Crawford. So for him to get knocked out the way he was, you know, and being on this stage, you know, I'm happy for him. I'm glad he got the shot and everything. And But it's just that he couldn't deal with that. And and we had no nothing to go off of, to be, to go off of like as far as content. You know, or or footage of him to say like, yo, like, you know, and Julius and Dongu going motherfucker fuck Terrence Crawford up. Who was saying that? And the people that were saying this, like, wait a minute, what are you watching? You know, there's like, you know, like people that are making hundreds of thousand dollars a year commentating fights, and they like, yo, on social media, we can't find no footage of the guy. You know, we just go all going off the Ricky Burns fight in that one round knockout, and I think it's like one or two pieces of other scattered ass footage out there of him. You know. So, 147 pounds is going to be real interesting for Terrence Crawford, especially since he's already become an undisputed champion. And a lot of a, a lot of champions these days don't want to be undisputed because of a there's likely somebody else who's a champion or on their way to becoming a champion of a belt that you may want, but your management or the fighter themselves is not confident in, enough in their skills, you know, to if they're going to beat that fighter. You know, perfect case scenario is Javante Davis Lomachenko. You know, so it's it's you know, or or financial reasons they won't fight a certain guy who has a belt because just somehow this guy got that belt, but the fighter don't want to fight it because he he not going to make no money. A network may not pick it up. So it's politically it's hard to become a champion when you got to have all four belts. Now right now, as I said, that World Boxing Super Series is close. Golovkin is close, not Canelo, because he don't want to fight for the WBC. So if Golovkin wins, he'll only be that WBO title away. Willie Monroe is close if he beats Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders is close if he beats Willie Monroe because then all they got to do is fight Golovkin if he wins or fight Canelo, and hopefully Canelo don't drop that IBF or that WBA title and then go after uh, Jamel Charlo, the winner of that, who can be undisputed. So the 160-pound division can be undisputed in three fights, you know, two fights, you know, if, if, if you know, if, if, if the gods see fit, you know, up there at up there at heavyweight, you have an unofficial tournament 
going on, you know, for fighters who can be cruiserweight. With Anthony Joshua having to fight Pulev, you know, because he's the mandatory, then being ordered to fight Luis Ortiz, but Luis Ortiz and Deontay Wilder, the WBC champion, may fight. Remember, Joshua has the WBA and the IBF, so there's already two belts. You got Joseph Parker fighting Huey Fury, you know, and then um, Eddie Hearn has already met with Huey. Eddie Hearn has already met with Joseph Parker for if Joseph Parker wins. And David Hay is still in the mix, even though he's not ranked, but it's because he's injured. It's because he's not ranked on 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 fighting Huey Fury if he wins, you know. So what other what other divisions are like are close? And I'm talking about that can happen without too much politics like really getting in the way. Not the 147 pound division, especially when it comes to that WBO. I don't see a, I, don't, I don't see. I would love to see Keith Thurman go on to try to be undisputed. You know, but for one, he's too injury prone. You know, like he'll have a good streak, you know, of all this momentum. Then he get injured, you know. I mean, depending on how you look at what Jorge Linares, you know, Mikey Garcia, Robert Easter, Terry Flanagan, but that's pretty much, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, so I don't want this being this old, no old 40 minute video. So. I'm Tea Street Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live. Congratulations to uh, Terrence Crawford. But, you know, now it's like, you know, Julius and Dangu going to be like, kind of be like sacred food for somebody. You know, because somebody's going to fight him. Like, oh, whoa, we fought the last, he was a unified champion and everything. And we still probably not going to know who do this. But it's good that he got this big payday, yo. He made like over a million dollars after everything. A run, like, it's supposed to be a million dollars, but after the sanctioning fees, like 900K or something, but. You know, like with deals and all kind of stuff like that, especially in his homeland, you know, sponsors and stuff. You know, he should have made or he should make a lot of money, you know, after everything's said and done. Oh, but I'm Tea Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live. I cover every single – oh, my bad. I got to stay close to the microphone now. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.